Let's review what was covered in an earlier lesson about boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. The number of degrees by which a solution's boiling point or freezing point differ from those of the pure solvent is given by this equation. The delta T represents the freezing point depression or the boiling point elevation. That is the number of degrees lower than freezing or the number of degrees higher than boiling. The K sub X is a constant. If we're calculating the freezing point depression, we need to use a K sub F. If we're calculating a boiling point elevation, we need to use a K sub B. These constants depend on what solvent you have. In much of first year college level chemistry, the solvent is water, so there are the values of those constants. Little m is the molality of the solution, and then i is what is called the Van't Hoff factor, and it takes into account into how many particles do your solute particles break into when they go into solution. So let's try this problem. Find the freezing point and boiling point of a solution containing 360 grams of barium chloride and 2.5 kilograms of water. Here's the equation that we have. We're going to have to use it twice, once for freezing point and once to find the boiling point. For water, there are the values of those constants, so we've got that. Now we need to figure out both the molality and the Van't Hoff factor. The molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. The molar mass of barium chloride is 208.7, and if we take moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent, which is given as 2.50, we can calculate the molality. So far, so good. We've got both K constants, we've got the molality, and now we need the Van't Hoff factor. Look at the formula for barium chloride. Into how many particles does this burst when you put it into water? And the answer is 3. So the Van't Hoff factor is 3. Well, let's plug the numbers in and we'll be done. We'll do freezing point first. Notice that in the upper right we've chosen the constant for freezing point. There's the molality, there's the Van't Hoff factor. The freezing point is different from the normal freezing point by 3.85 degrees Celsius. Since the normal freezing point of water we know to be zero, then the freezing point of this solution is going to be 3.85 degrees below that, which is negative 3.85 degrees Celsius. Now we'll calculate the boiling point elevation. We've used a different constant. Again, in the upper right, we've used the constant for boiling point elevation now, times the same molality, times the same Van't Hoff factor, and we get this number, 1.08 degrees Celsius. And that is the number of degrees higher than the normal boiling point that this solution would boil at. The pure solvent water would boil at 100 degrees. This solution will boil at 101.08 degrees Celsius. Let's try one more problem. If we glance through this problem, let's see what kind of information we're given. First of all, we have this substance, camphor, and its chemical formula. We are given its normal freezing point. We're given its K sub F value. And then we're told that a certain mass of some other substance is dissolved in the camphor. What that means is that the camphor is the solvent, and this non-electrolytic substance, whatever that is, is the solute. And then we're told that the mixture has a new freezing point, which is, as we can see, lower than the original freezing point, and we should expect this. Whenever we add a solute to a solvent, the freezing point should drop, and it does. And so what we want to find here is the unknown's molar mass. Now, there's a lot of information here, and if you don't know what to do, do something. Get started, 
calculate something, write down something, keep your units straight, and hopefully that will lead you somewhere. Obviously you're never going to get anywhere if you don't start. So let's start. I'm thinking we have a freezing point depression problem, so let's start with the equation. What can we insert into this equation? Well, in the upper left here, we're given the value of k sub f for camphor. So I'm going to put that in. We also know what the normal freezing point is, and we know what the new freezing point is. So we can subtract the smaller from the larger and calculate the change in freezing point. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. What about the Vantoff factor, I? The clue to that is this word, non-electrolytic substance. For any non-electrolyte, the Vantoff factor is going to be 1. Okay, well this will allow us to calculate the molality. And recall that molality is moles per kilogram. Moles of what? Per kilogram of what? Moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And specifically in this case, the solute is the unknown substance, and the solvent is the camphor. So I'm going to go ahead and put those terms in there, because this might help me get further in the problem. Now what do we do? Well, we're kind of stuck. But what else are we given here? I'm seeing that we are given the grams of camphor. Look at this number that we have halfway down the screen. In the denominator, we have the unit kilograms of camphor. Well, I can convert grams of camphor into kilograms, and then if I multiply those quantities, the kilograms of camphor will cancel, and I'll be left with the number of moles of my unknown. Notice in the problem statement, we had 22.01 grams of camphor, and I've changed it into kilograms down here in the lower right, and then I've multiplied that by this quantity right here. The kilograms of camphor have canceled, and we're left with moles of unknown. Now what? Well, we have that many moles of unknown, we know. And we know that that number of moles of unknown have this mass, 0.186, because that's given in the problem statement. And the question is, find the unknown's molar mass. In other words, if you had one mole of unknown, how much would that weigh? Hopefully you can solve that, and if you do, you get the unknown's molar mass to be about 109 grams per mole.